Okay, here's a uh, little experiment. Um, new kind of, uh, what would you call it? Heat engine, I guess, um, that Chet showed on our.com. Here we have two metal lengths of 100 mil stormwater pipe, elbow on the bottom, elbow on the top, and next to that you'll see my little fogger unit and that tube goes into the elbow. We'll hop up the ladder here so we can have a better look. The tube from our fogger unit here goes into the elbow and it is pointing out this way. I don't know if you can see that or not, but um, oh, it is. So it is pointing, well it's probably pointing down into this corner, so it's not pointing down the tube. It's not pointing directly out, perhaps a 45 degree angle. Uh, this was so we could see the effect that happens here. So the theory is, um, the fog cools the air in the tube and that air becomes uh, heavier because it becomes more dense and um, flows out the bottom. So once it gets going, draws air in from the top, uh, it is cooled, condensed, becomes heavier, drops down the tube and the more it drops down the tube the cooler it gets, comes out the bottom. Now, the volume of air, and please don't get volume mixed up with mass, the volume of air going in the top um, is greater than the volume of air that will be coming out the bottom. However, if we subtract um, the moisture out of that air, um, the mass of air going in the top is the same as the mass of air coming out the bottom once we subtract our water particles. Um, only the volume has changed because the air has become more dense so you could say compressed. Now this is a uh, new type of uh, wind turbine I guess you could call it uh, but in fact I believe it to be a heat engine um, that they are looking at and uh, apparently it produces more energy um, than it takes to pump the water up to the top, spray it into the big tube and um, of course the water is once again collected from the bottom. You can see a little dribble there from my previous runs. So that little foggy unit there uses 200 mils of water an hour and we are raising it um, minus the loop at the top there two meters. So that takes about four joules of energy raise 200 mils of water two meters um, so about 66 millijoules per minute required to lift the water up to that height. Uh, they don't use a foggy unit they simply use uh, misting units so uh, there is not a lot of water going into this tube and the tube is very small their tube is something like 400 feet high and about uh, well 150 feet in diameter and it's cone shaped whereas mine is just straight. So we have our little switch here and uh, we'll switch it on and I'll show you what happens. You'll see at the start all the fog will come out the front of the tube and then once it starts to cool the air in this tube here uh, we start getting a venturi effect, I guess you could call it, but um, it's not because of the fog coming out of that tube. It is because the air inside the tube is cooling, creating a vacuum up the top and the pressure down the bottom. So we get a flow. And we can see this flow starting to take place when the fog starts coming out the top of the tube. Uh, a small amount will start to go into the tube here, cool the air, and then um, 
starts to uh, self-feed through the tube. So we'll switch it on, I'll let you have a look. So now you can see the fog coming out of the tube. But once the uh, tube starts to cool, we now have the fog coming out the bottom of the tube. So like I said, the flow out of the bottom of the tube is not very great, but the flow into the top of the tube is far greater. So we'll turn this off and um, we'll let that tube drain out and equalise in temperature. Now the temperature at the moment is 10 degrees C so it's still pretty cold and I think the hotter the day the better this would work and you would have to insulate this tube as well would make it even more efficient I think so um, now that that's all flushed out we'll get up here switch it on we'll have a look again So as you can see, um, we have quite a high volume of air flowing into the tube here now and very little volume at the bottom. Now on their setup they have the turbines on the bottom of the tube where the air comes out and from what I'm seeing here they would be far better having the turbines at the inlet where the greatest flow of air is. switch that off. So that's my little fog unit that's out of a um, domestic fan. We get plenty of them come back, a uh, little old cheapo china things and plenty get returned for warranty. Cheaper to throw them in the bin than it is to fix them. So I just bring them home and they come in handy. Okay so let's start that up again. So now you see all the fog's flowing out of the tube, it starts to get a flow going down into the tube and now we can see very high flow going in through the top of the tube and once again a very low flow coming out the bottom. So I think that might be where they're making their mistake. If they wanted to make the machine more efficient um, you wouldn't put the fans at the bottom of the tube, or the turbines at the bottom of the tube. You would put them up here at the top. Where the volume of air going in is far greater, and the flow speed is far higher. Alright, that's it from me. Um, interesting little experiment. I even stick a fan in here and see if it's got enough to spin it. But um, at the moment, with what we have there, which is very little water, we're looking at 66 millijoules of energy per minute has to be recovered um, before it pays the price of getting the water up to the top. That is assuming a 100% efficient pump to get the water up to the top, which is not going to happen. But there is a high volume of air flowing into the top of this tube, so um, yeah, maybe something to it. Thanks for watching guys.